All right, welcome back. We're going to take a look at the scan functions inside the FUMP package. Now, this is really going to open up a lot of possibilities for us. So now we can take input from the user and we can respond to user. And we can really take input from anything of typewriter. So it could be from, we could take input from a file, a channel, web server. You know, like I said, basically anything of typewriter. So in our first example here, we're just going to be using the FUMP scan function. And this is just going to read from the standard input. So, and the standard input by default is just the OS, you know, os.standardin, which is our terminal. So it's going to be the same for scan, scan F, and scan line as well. So let's just go ahead and run this. And it's going to take our input from the standard in, which is the terminal. And nice to meet you, Justin. So basically what happened here is the scan is going to read from standard in, stand, uh, OS standard in, which was a terminal, and we give it our memory address of our string here, and it saved that input. It scanned it, and then we went ahead and saved it to this variable here. And the scan function is going to return number of items successfully scanned, which was just one. And in this case, you know, if we had multiple items, it'd be separated by a space in between each one. But anyway, we've scanned one item and our error was nil. And then we basically just printed it back to the screen. So let's take a look at scanning multiple items. Okay, so we have our three strings, and we're gonna, and again, we're just gonna read from the standard input, and we're gonna go ahead and save the value to each one of these three, and then we're gonna print them back. Um, there we go. Okay, so we had all three of these. We had apple, pear, and peach. And it just, we went ahead and saved them those three, and then we just printed them, printed them back off to ourselves. Now, we could actually do this a little bit different. And it's gonna treat uh, the new line character as a space. So we'll put in one, put in the second, and put in the third. And notice that all three of these still print just the same. Now that's not going to be the same for all the all the functions. That works for scan, but it's not going to work for all of them. Okay, so here we have scan F. And this is going to restrict, uh, it's going to restrict the input to a defined format. So, you know, it's going to be different than say like printf where, you know, this one's going to format, you know, as it's, you know, writing it to something. But anyway, let's just run that to show how it works. All right, so as you can see, that doesn't work. So we have to use this particular format of what we're putting in there. So let's just do that. Oh, whoops. Item, serial cost. There we go. So this one, it goes, it records, it saves it, and any we even you know format on the way out. So basically here it's not gonna allow this first one to work. We just get the zero state and empty space, you know, and zeros for our float. That one's not working because it's restricting the form you know, it's requiring that format to be like this on the way in, since we had item, you know, semicolon, and then it's gonna expect, hey, here's gonna be the first First thing that I'm going to go ahead and scan, and then after it sees cost semicolon, the next thing is 
going to be the second thing that it scans, and it scans that one to cost. So um, remember, this is just restricting format. So I couldn't, you know, you can't do something like this, you know, because that would cause an error. Um, let's see. Well, it's not going to cause an error. I'm sorry, but it's it's not going to work as expected because it's you know it's looking at that format. We're not trying to format things as we're scanning them. It's just restricting what can come in, it has to be in that format. If we want to format what we're writing, we're, uh, we're obviously just going to do that with you know, the printf, you know, not with the scanf. It's just restricting what's coming in. All right, so we have our scan line here. And we're just going to go ahead and look for three different foods. Now this isn't, oops. there we go. Uh, it's just, we're going to look for three different foods and scan lines are going to work a little different, different than scan. So new lines in the input must match new lines in the format. So. All right, so that works. Hamburger, fries, and soda. Sounds tasty. But let's go ahead and try this by putting in a new line. So. As you can see, when it hits a new line, it's going to go ahead and stop. And we're missing some values here, so we just haven't. We have our empty, you know, our empty strings for food two and food three. So scan line is expecting it all to be on one line. If you create, try and create a new line, well, it's just going to go ahead and stop the scan. So that's how that one is different from the regular scan, where you could, you know, give it, you know, everything on a new line, or you could, you know, or just separate it by spaces. Well, scan line, you just got to separate it by spaces, or else it's not going to work for you. All right. So we're going to go ahead and use S scan here. Let's just go ahead and run that. And basically what we're doing here, the S is, so we're requiring a string for an input. We're utilizing a string for input, you know, instead of, you know, passing it a, a writer. So anyway, so we pass it this string, and then it's going to go ahead and scan the first one, which was, you know, John. It saved that to name. Thirty-three saved that to age, and seventy thousand to salary. And then, of course, um, as you can see, we scanned three items. We had no errors, and then we just printed out, you know, John is thirty-three years old and has a salary of seventy thousand. So, um, kind of like S print, where we're uh, we're returning a string, and this one we're expecting a string in. So that, that's kind of the, the difference that you'll see there. And a little bit of review. So we have our func s scan. So this is going to be expecting a string coming in, which we have here, um, as you can see from the uppercase S. So we have our string coming in, and then we're going to go ahead, and here's our two memory addresses that we're going to go ahead and save our scans to. Now, as you can see here, this will work. This will work here um, because it has the same format as here. See, this, we, this is a silly scan F, so it requires the format coming in be you know the same as 
you know, our template here. So as you can see, it's going to expect, you know, it's going to save value S at the start. And we get to have this is here or else it's not, it's not going to work. So let's say pass that in. There we go. So we run into a problem. Input does not match format. And if we change it back, it's going to work just fine. So we couldn't, you know, we couldn't use this as our input. Couldn't even use that as our input because it still needs the rest of it to match. So again, um, the scan f part of it, we're requiring the format to you know to match basically. And I went ahead, and just borrowed this example from Golang.org. A lot of good stuff there. Oh, whoops. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at F scan. So uppercase F, F you can remember us with the print functions, we were defining a, you know, an IO writer where we wanted to write something to, you know, with F scan, we're just determining where we want to read from. So an IO reader. So, and a reader is an interface that wraps the basic read method. So it's, you know, it's of type reader if it has this method, has this behavior. So here, we're basically going to go ahead and pass it in a reader where we want it to read from. And it sounds silly, but we're just going to go ahead and pass it in the st OS standard in because that, you know, that's still one of those, you know, that's still a, still a reader and let's choose gopher okay so the animal we choose is gopher so basically um, it's saying hey we're you know I need a io.reader I need a place to read this from and we just gave it the you know the OS standard in which is, by default is just the terminal and of course what we scanned we went ahead and you know, saved it at this memory address, and then we printed that back out. Now, you, like I said, you can, you know, you can use anything, you know, of type reader, anything that implements, you know, has that read method. Okay. So here we're going to go ahead and read from a file, and this is just a file we have in the same directory here. So we have our three, three variables, and we're going to use OS open, and it's going to go ahead and open our file. Here's our file name; it matches, and it's going to return an error, and it's going to return, return a file, and it's going to return an error. Now, if successful, um, you know, if successful, methods on the return file can be used. Or reading so in short the this is going to have a read method so it's going to be of type reader and we're going to be able to pass it in to F scan so we go ahead and open our file we check to see if we have an error we'll go ahead and go ahead and log that if there is um, but anyway we're going to use the F scan and again it's going to look at how many things successfully read return our error and the important thing here is we're passing in File, which yeah, which from OS open, this type type file inside OS open, it has that read method, so it's a type reader, and we can just pass that in. So anyway, let's go ahead and look inside that file, and we have dog, cat, and ferret. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, your animals are dog, cat, and ferret. So basically, we said, hey, here's your reader. And then we went ahead and saved it to our three variables. And then came down here and we printed them all back out. You could even create your own uh, reader as long as it implements that, that method. Um, so there's quite a bit that you can do with this. 
And this one's just just for fun. This is just a math adding game. Kind of show, you know, you can create a loop like we created here. And basically, we're going to go ahead and create um, some random numbers. Um, anyway, using this from the, you know, our rand package for random. Uh, this is deterministic. So anyway, you would go ahead and use the crypto package if you want something. Uh, something that's different every single time. But anyway, uh, 7 plus 3, there we go. And then, of course, let's say let's get it wrong. Instead of 2, let's put in 3. Sorry, that's incorrect. Give it the right answer. And we can make something that just responds to the user. You know, and we can just keep looping through and through and through. I didn't put any break statement on here. I could always check to see if what was returned was something like, you know, the word exit or something and have it exit. You could always do something like that. But I mean, basically, um, you know, our for loop is just going to go ahead and keep running here. And we got two numbers, which we're pulling, you know, semi, you know, randomly. If I wanted to make sure I get something different each time, I just change the number I'm input inputting to our seed here. But basically we're creating two numbers and we're going to go ahead and print the screen. Hey, um, was the sum of these two numbers and then we're going to scan that response from the user and we're going to check if that answer so we saved in an answer we're just checking to see if our two random numbers added together is equal to that and if it is we'll tell them hey nice work that's correct and then we'll go it'll go ahead and go back to the top of the loop create two more numbers ask the question again um, but if it doesn't equal to that then it's going to say sorry and we just have a little go to statement and it's going to go ahead and go back to input and it's just going to bring the code right back to here and it's going to ask the question again so it'll just kind of make a little loop within the loop so anyway like i said uh world of possibilities with the scan function um yeah take input from anywhere anywhere there's a writer so i Hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you some new ideas of what you can do with the font package. And I'll see you in the next one.